So first, let's start by understanding the definition of internal auditing. Internal auditing, the definition is an independent objective, assurance and consulting activity designed to add value and improve the organization operation. It helps an organization accomplish its objective by bringing a systematic disciplined approach to evaluate and improve the effectiveness of risk, management, control, governance processes. So the main discussion here is about how can we provide assurance on the risk management process, on the internal control process, and on the governance process. So for that, we can see the IIA, they say, you know, internal control is the core of the operation. Internal control will help the organization in achieving the objectives as well as managing the risk. Now, risk management will help the organization in achieving the risk and governance will help the organization in achieving its objectives. So this is where we look at it. Now, the discussion here, which is very interesting and so many focus on it, is who's responsible for internal control? Well, the answer, everyone in the organization is responsible for internal control. Mm -hmm. So who's responsible for risk management? The answer, everyone inside the organization is responsible for risk management. Now, internal control and risk management, everyone is responsible. However, the responsibility will, will vary from top management to board of directors to internal auditors. Now, who's responsible for governance? Well, the answer, only the board of directors is responsible for governance. So this is where we understand governance is a, is a leadership issue. Now, let's start understanding what is risk. What is the definition of risk? If you see someone actually taking a parachute and he's jumping, what is the risk? What can happen here? Lines can break. The guy can get heart attack. There are so many aspects that will happen as well as this can happen to him. So in that way, we need to understand what are the risks. First, we start by understanding the definition of risk. So what is the definition of risk? Based on COSO ERM, the definition risk is the probability that an event will occur and adversely affect the achievement of the objective. So something negative, now you say, wait, what if something positive happened that affect the achievement of the objective? Rather than having 10% increase in sales, we have 20% increase in sales. We can say this is not a risk, this is opportunity. So in that way, this is something positive happened that we call it opportunity. If it's something negative happened, we call it risk. Now, IIA, they define risk as the uh, possibility of an event occurring that will have an impact on the achievement of the objective. And they say risk is measured based on the impact and likelihood. And recently, they start measuring it based on what? On the velocity, how fast this risk, this risk is going to hit us. Now, if we will look at risk, always we need to understand the value. We call it the value at risk. Because we need to understand when we are doing risk management, we are always preserving the value for, for the shareholders. We are ensuring there are no fines, there's no fraud happening, everything in control. As well as if we do effective risk management, we can take advantage of so many opportunities. We can create more value for the shareholders by taking advantages of so many opportunities are there. And this is the key point that usually some organization, they say, we don't want to take risk. Well, if you don't take risk, you will not gain. And some organization, they said, we want to take a lot of risk, but they take excessive risk. So the issue is about how can you take what we call it the optimal risk, where you are not taking so much risk, you are not taking a little bit risk, as well as you are looking at the set off between uh, the cost, the benefits, as well as the risk that you are taking. So you are taking the optimal level of risk for you to achieve your business objectives. Now, if you are taking risk, definitely the next step you need to do is to do risk management. So what is the definition of risk management? Where they say risk management is a process to identify, assess, manage, and control potential events or situations to provide reasonable assurance regarding the achievement of the organization objectives. So with risk, we go over different steps, five steps. We are gonna go over them in a second. Now, who's responsible for risk management? We discussed everyone inside the organization. What is the responsibility of senior management? Establish the risk management. Great. What is the responsibility for operational managers? Implement the risk man management. What is the responsibility for what we call you know, internal auditors? Evaluate the risk management. What about the board of directors? Oversight. Now, someone will ask, what is the responsibility of the risk management department in that case? Well, what is the correct answer? 
it's to coordinate. They coordinate the activity related to risk management inside the organization. Now, let's go over the risk management process. What is the risk management process? The risk management process is based on five steps. First, we need to identify the risk. So we identify we have risk A, B, C, D. We identify the risk we have in place. The second one is what we call assess the risk. So we need to assess the risk. We say this risk is high or low. But here, very important to note that we do assessment of risk before looking at the internal control and risk management in place. So we look at the organization. There is a risk of fire. The risk based on the probability and impact is actually medium before looking at what they have in place to reduce the chances of what happening and to reduce the impact. Then we evaluate the risk by understanding what they have inside the organization to reduce the risk. And in that case, we evaluate it. Do they reduce the risk to the acceptable level? Do they have so many controls in place to reduce the risk to the acceptable level? This is the evaluation we did. We look at how much is the risk, what controls they have in place to reduce it. And if they reduce it to the acceptable level, in that way, we can say the risk is reduced. If the risk is still medium or high, what can we do? We move to number four. We manage the risk. We implement risk management processes. We implement internal controls to reduce it to the acceptable level. And number five, which is monitoring. We need to ensure that the risk is always in control and it's always less than the acceptable level. Now, understanding of risk management will be based on your understanding of what we call the business risk, the inherent risk. The business, the, the uh, risk that exists in your business. So this is the, the, the uh, uh, risk related to the nature of your business. If you are in construction, if you are in hospitality, if you are uh, uh, in uh, uh, manufacturing, what is the risk that inherent that exists in the nature of your business? So of course, that risk is different from one industry to another. But the way they look at it is usually the risk is there. The risk is big. What you do, do that this inherent risk that you have it there, you try to reduce it by implementing control, by implementing entity level control, plus process level control, transaction control, additional mitigating control. So that risk was so big, and after that you reduce it, reduce it, reduce it, until it became what we call residual risk. So inherent risk, the risk that exists in the business, Residual risk is the remaining risk after implementing all the risk management and controls in place. Now the question here, if the remaining risk is still more than the risk tolerance or the acceptable risk, which is the maximum risk the organization can take in that way, if your residual risk is still bigger than the acceptable risk, you need to implement more internal control and risk management to reduce it to the acceptable level. If your residual risk is less than the acceptable level, you are okay, so in that way, you reduce the risk enough. Now, so many organizations, when they are speaking about risk management, this is what will happen. They say, it's risky, we are managing it. But if you don't report it, if you don't understand it, if you don't measure it, if you don't assess it, how do you know that you are actually managing that risk? So the first step will start by going and having what we call the risk map. With the risk map, you have the impact, you have the proba probability, and you are trying to assess and saying this risk, is it high or low? And then you are evaluating and you are saying after implementing the controls and risk ma uh, management processes, is it still high or is it now low? And what can you do after that? After that, we can say you need to manage it. So the way you need to manage it, you need what to do what we call to respond to risk. For you to respond to risk, you need to say, is this high probability and low impact or high impact and low probability? So if the risk is high impact and high probability, you need to do one of two options. You can avoid it, so that way you don't take that risk, or you need to take it and you need to mitigate and control to reduce it. Now, if the risk is medium, where we have high probability and low impact, the way what you need to do, you need to control it. You need to try to reduce it. But if you have high impact and low probability, like fire, high impact and the probability is low, what you do, you transfer it, you buy insurance policy, you share it, you transfer it. However, if the uh, risk, uh, the impact is low and the probability is low, in that way you assume it. For example, you know, in a supermarket, $10 uh, fraud by the cashier is very low. It's not worth your time for you to implement a lot of controls for it, but something bigger than that, definitely it will worth it. 
So for that, you know, risk analysis will be based on the concept of conducting three things, of doing risk assessment, which is identifying, measuring, and prioritization, evaluating the risk, as well as risk management, understanding what are we going to do, how are we going to treat that risk, how are we going to respond to that risk, and then we are speaking about risk monitoring, ensuring that we are doing monitoring on a process level, entity level, transaction level to ensure that all, all the time risk is being managed. Now, for you to implement effective risk management inside the organization, you need to focus on implementing what we call enterprise risk management. Implementing the risk management all over the organization, not in certain divisions. We look at a risk-wide approach to implementing that by following certain frameworks. So, COSO, they implemented COSO ERM. They upgraded their uh, you know, uh, 1992 version of COSO, which is now they have the new uh, version of COSO uh, 2013 related to internal controls, and they move it to implement what we call COSO ERM. And COSO ERM, it's focusing on implementing uh, risk management framework inside the organization by first understanding not the internal control environment, but the internal environment. What is the culture of risk inside the organization? What is the tone at the top? Then understanding exactly how the objective setting is being done inside the organization. Are we taking risky objectives? Identifying the events that can cause the risk. Then identifying the risk, assessing the risk. Then deciding what is the risk response we need to take. Looking at the uh, control activities and after that communicating and monitoring to ensure that you know everything is in place and working according to as they should. So this is what we call COSO ERM. Many organizations, they implement COSO ERM as a risk management framework. However, before we go on to another framework, you need to understand what is the definition of, uh, of ERM, enterprise risk management. We say enterprise risk management is a process affected by the entity board of director, management, and other personnel applied in a strategic setting and across the enterprise designed to identify potential event that may affect the entity and manage the risk uh, to be within the risk appetite to provide reasonable assurance. See, it's not absolute assurance, reasonable assurance regarding the achievement of the entity objectives. So first, it's a process across the organization and it's providing reasonable assurance. These are the main key issues. Now, as we said, this is the responsibility of everyone, the board of director, management, and other personnel. Now, IIA will define ERM the following. It's a structured, consistent, and continuous process. Three important words. It's a structured, it's consistent, and continuous. It's ongoing thing across our whole organization to identify, assess, and deciding on response to, uh, uh, to and reporting on opportunities and threats that affect the achievement of the objectives. Now, the key issue here for you to understand what is the responsibility of the internal auditor when it comes to risk management? <laughs> this is very important. You have, as internal auditor, core responsibilities related to uh, risk management. What are your core responsibilities? Your core responsibilities are related to make sure that you provide assurance on the risk management processes. You n n n see the organization is actually identifying the risk, managing the risk in the appropriate way. This is your core role is to provide assurance. Now, there is a role that you may play, which is you may help the organization by doing advisory role. It's recommended you can do that by helping the organization implement risk management process in place, by giving them recommendation, advising them, trying to facilitate, coordinate the work with them. But you actually, you don't get your hands dirty. You don't go and do implementation. You don't go and do the design for the controls. You don't go and be responsible for the uh, control, uh, for the risk management in place. You go and help the organization just in and identifying, assessing, and understanding what they need to do. Now, the thing that you should not do as internal auditor, you should not provide assurance on the risk themselves. You should not implement the risk management process. You should not design the risk management process. This is the responsibility of the senior management and management. Senior management will establish the risk management process and management will implement it.